Hey everybody, this is Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. And today we are gonna be looking at a really fun tangle that I found out about a little while ago and it is called Flower Funnel and it is by uh, a teacher uh, by the name of Lisa Jane. So thank you Lisa Jane for this great tangle. Um, that's the, uh, the tangle right here that you're seeing. That's Funnel Flower and it has the little uh, droplet on the top there. And then we've got a couple of flux in there that you can see that I've done some variation on and then of course we've got some fescue uh, going on there and a lot of color yay color woohoo anyway so I just wanted to show you um, all the different incarnations that I've done with this um, over the weekend I was camping with some friends of mine I have a, a camper group that I get together with and we tangle uh, quite a bit and so I did this version of the class with them and they did great and of course you can see it's a little bit different than the first one it's got a little bit more texture on the outside but remembering the name of this tangle right off the top but I'm sure somebody's gonna come forth and tell me <laughs> um, and then finally I did a more simplified version of the tangle and um, this I actually taught to my ladies in their 80s I have a, a, a really great group of women here in the East Bay that I teach and they are just a phenomenal group and so I simplify a little bit for them so that it's not so hard for them to um, to create the piece. Uh, there's a lot going on sometimes in some of these pieces and if I simplify it they're more successful. So this is the more simplified version for them. So with that said, the things that we are going to need for class today. Uh, you are going to need to have your handy dandy double headed mono twin uh, pen. I like this one because it's got a more robust side and a fine liner side for puddling work or for doing um, a thicker line, which I love. We're also going to need our Micron PN. It is my favorite. And then we will at some point be using um, the cool gray uh, from, um, from Prisma. I like this pencil because when I use gray, um, I'm left-handed and it ends up on my hand and so this is a really great way for it to not end up on my hand and if you don't have uh, one of these grays in your Prisma color set or in any set that you have you can always use graphite um, it's just fine I just I like to suggest this one for my lefties and for people who end up wearing all their ink <laughs> so there it is uh, you'll also need a regular little golf pencil a notice and no eraser haha -ha, there are no mistakes in Zentangle only oops or tunities and then uh, finally I know that some of you know that I'm really a uh, into my paper and you can see this paper has got a lot of stuff going on on the back of it but this is the Genesis tile and I love this tile it's really really great um, for receiving colors super smooth and you can pick these up at tangledyogi.com you can go to the Tangled Yogi store and find out all about it there so that is what you are going to need. Now if you don't have any of the Tangled Yogi tiles, um, a apprentice tile will suffice. It's not as smooth as uh, what I've got going on here, but it's a great tile. Um, or you could use Bristol paper, um, or you could use really super smooth um, watercolor paper too. That's always great. All right, so there's our materials. We're going to take those off to the side for a moment um, and get ourselves centered here. So let's go ahead and sit back in our chairs and get ready to tangle. So sitting back in your chair, allow the feet to connect with the floor. Let your spine grow comfortably tall. And let's go ahead and inhale through the nose and shrug your shoulders up towards your ears. And then exhale, roll the shoulders back and down. Inhale, roll the shoulders up towards the ears. Exhale, roll them back and down. And one more time, inhale, roll the shoulders up towards the ears. And exhale, roll them back and down. Allowing the spine to grow comfortably tall here. Feeling your sitting bones making connection with the chair, 
allowing the hands to rest comfortably with the palms facing up in your lap, allowing the shoulders to melt away from your ears, and feeling the crown of the head as it presses off towards the ceiling. So as we begin to practice our Zen Tangle practice today, I wanted to talk with you about an idea that I had heard in my meditation class. It was something called Katsu Katsu, which is a Japanese term, which means to bring yourself fully to the moment. And so often in our society, we have a tendency to want to multitask and do many different things all at once. But in our Zen Tangle practice, we are practicing a one-pointed awareness where we are focusing completely on what we are creating. And so with Katsu Katsu, you can bring your attention completely into the present moment. Now often, you know, the mind is like a puppy and it wants to wander off and we can just gently bring our awareness back in and say, oh, okay, I wandered off there for a minute. I'm just gonna bring myself back into the present moment and focus on this line that I'm creating or this color that I'm shading or whatever it is that we are working on in the present moment. And often when we're practicing, we might notice emotions that float up like frustration or judgment or determination. And with Katsu Katsu, we can just acknowledge that those emotions are coming up. Say, okay, I see you, but I'm just gonna go back to what I was doing before and just let those things go. So let's take three more deep breaths right here and acknowledge the idea of practicing Katsu Katsu. Inhaling through the nose, and exhaling through the mouth. Inhaling through the nose. Exhaling through the mouth. And let's take in one really big deep breath right here. Full body breath. Inhale through the nose. Filling all the way up. And then exhale with a sigh. Ha. <sighs> bringing your breath to back to its natural pace and let's get ready to tangle okay so i've had a chance to move away those tiles here and i neglected to mention two things in our materials section um, it's just like me to do that. <laughs> um, you are going to need to have color pencils to create this tile. Right now I have a favorite that I've been working with and that is um, made by Stedtler and they're called Ergo Soft Pencils. I'm just in love with this pencil. It's a really great set. You can get it on Amazon. Um, I think they're wonderful for layering. I love their colors. They're really easy to work with and I just think they're a beautiful set. So right now these guys are my favorite. I'm really also enjoying the Prisma colors. I think they're great as well. Uh, but right now these guys have my heart and I just reach for them uh, way more often um, right now. It's just a thing. Uh, and, and they don't cost that much, which is great. So there's that. And then I also forgot, you're gonna need a penny. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's going to be for the center here. If you don't have a penny, you could use a dime. If you don't have a dime, you could use nickel. Or if you're in another country, just choose a small coin that you like, um, and hopefully it will work. Okay, so there's my goofiness. You know I don't like using the compass, so we're going to be using a penny. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the uh, old-fashioned way here, and we are going to go ahead and do our dots in each corner. Now you can see that I'm leaving a little bit of space in um, on the outside there and that's gonna be for the border that we're gonna work on later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna connect my lines and you can see that I'm not being really perfectionistic about it. I'm just making it really easy for my hand as I turn my tile and just start to work around the piece itself. So there you have it, I've got a square. It's not perfect, it doesn't have to be. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and we're going to make a big X going across the piece like so. 
You can see I just went from one corner to the other corner. Really easy peasy. I'm not pressing too hard on that pencil because these are just lines for me to use later on when we're doing the tangle itself. So we're really basically creating our string. And then I'm gonna come down here through the middle and intersect through the center. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just turning my tile. And there you have it. So I've got my string all set up and ready to rock and roll. Now I'm going to grab that penny and I'm gonna put it in the middle here and I'm gonna to try to line it up as best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just really to help you to make a circle. A lot of people have trouble with um, circles for some reason, and this is my way of just simplifying it. So I'm just gonna hold on to this here, and I'm very gently going to go around my little penny here. And I'll just move my hand around to make it easy. And then voila, there is my circle for the center and hopefully you can see that mine is not perfect if yours is really off don't worry about it it's no big deal remember when perfectionism shows up just acknowledge that it was there and let's just keep on moving forward one of my favorite quotes um, that i've been really feeling lately is from picasso he says i start with an idea and then it turns into something else so I'd like to think of all of us as starting with an idea, but it being something else completely. So we're gonna let go of our pencils here, and we are gonna start with our micron pens. So I'm just gonna grab my micron pen, and I'm gonna do what I, I like to uh, tell my students, is something called an overdraw. And so it's basically where I'm just going ahead and going around on the pencil line that I just did for that circle and just making that nice and clear for me so that I know where I'm going with the piece. And I'm just gonna overdraw on the circle itself, okay? So just on the circle itself. If you need to pause me, this is a great place to do so. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep on moving forward here. I'm gonna blow this up a little bit so people can see what I'm up to. And we're gonna start with the idea of the tangle flux. And I'm sure most of you have done flux before. And I'll just do a quick tutorial for those of you who are new to Zen Tangle and just coming upon me. Flux in the Zen Tangle world generally looks like this. And people tend to put a line up the center and maybe three dots, and that is flux. Okay, so what we're gonna do on ours is we're gonna do a flux, and you can see that I'm right here. I just put a little dot right where I'm starting, and I'm gonna make myself a nice big teardrop. And notice that the teardrop is gonna hit the border, and then it's gonna come back and down. I almost want you to think of this as a petal on a flower. And then I'll go down to the bottom and I'll do the same thing And then I'm just gonna turn my tile and I'm going to do it again. I'm gonna go up and create a teardrop. And then I'm gonna go down and create a teardrop. And I can see already that this side is a little bit larger, but I'm just okay with that. It's just fine. So once you have that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start to work inside of the flux. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come right here. You can see I'm just below the top of it. I'm gonna make two dots, one, two, one, two, just like that. Everybody see that? And then I'm gonna make this really nice X going across that's gonna connect those dots, just like so. And we're gonna do that on each of the teardrops. So I'll just turn my tile I'll make my dots, and then I'm gonna make my X, turning my tile, making my dots, create the X. I'm gonna go again, dot, 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 X, and there you have it. We've got the detailing in for our flux. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm gonna put away my micron for a minute and I'm gonna grab my handy dandy mono twin. And I'm gonna puddle in now inside of those X's. And you can see that I'm just barely letting my pen touch the page here. So nice tip with any of the pens that you're using, the lighter the pen touches the page, the more the ink will flow. And you want to have a nice gentle grip on your pen as well, just nice and loose. We're not holding on for dear life here, we're just enjoying our materials and offering up gratitude for this time to create. And you can see I'm just turning my tile and going in and filling in the spaces. And you want to make sure that you're being thorough. You don't want any white poking through. Turning my tile. And there's the last piece right here, making that look really nice and clean. So there you have it. We're gonna let go of the mono twin and we're gonna go back to our micron. If you need to catch up with us, go ahead and pause me right here and I will see you in a minute. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to catch up with us here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my piece on the diagonal here, um, on the diamond as it were, and I'm gonna put a little dot right here on the center part of my uh, neutral area. It's kind of got a negative space, if you will, right in here. And so what I'm gonna do is you can see that I've got this corner right here. Hopefully you can see that. Let's, let's make sure we make it nice and big so everybody can see. So then what I'm gonna do is when I come up to this corner, I'm gonna put two dots nice and far down on the corner. Can everybody see that? Because I wanna have a nice wide space. And I want you to think about the letter V. And so I always like to goof around whenever I say that um, we're talking about letters, I think of um, Sesame Street. So this part of the tangle was brought to you by the letter V and V is for victory. So here we go. We're gonna make our V. And you can see that it's got a nice wide mouth there. Now it's okay if you get a really narrow flower. When I did this one over the weekend, I had a very narrow flower and it gave me a really, really interesting feel to it. But the first time that I did it, I had a nice wide flower and I think I preferred that one for myself. But either way is just fine, it's just a preference thing. So I'm gonna come back in and now we're making the tangle, I believe it's called Flower Funnel. And this is the one by Lisa Jane. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna make a curved line going down and back to the center here. And then I'm gonna come down over here and I'm gonna do the exact same thing except once I hit the line, I'm gonna stop. At the top, I'm gonna to put in a nice little half moon there. So there you have it. I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to do it again in this next corner. So I'm going to line it up. Here's my dot. I'm going to do my two dots a little further down from the corner because I want a nice wide V. I'm going to come in. And then I'll do my curved line coming back to the center. Another curved line going back to the center. And then I'll top it off with my half moon. And I'll just move on to the next spot. Here we go again. Dot in the bottom. Two dots, nice and far away from the corner there. Going into the center, into the center. And then the curved line going all the way down through the center, all the way down until I hit, 
and then I'll do my little half moon and then I'm turning my tile and I'm doing it again. Last one right here, putting that little dot in. Nice wide dots there, coming in for the V. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to come all the way in. And then this one is gonna go in and stop. And then once again, nice half moon right at the top. So there we have this really nice beginning to our tangle here. I'm really enjoying this uh, particular piece. I've done it a few times and I really, really like it. But you can see that we're pretty close to being where I first started with my ladies from the 80s. You need to pause here this is a great place to do it otherwise we're going to continue on so I'm going to go back to working on the diamond here and I'm going to come right up into this space right here you can see I've got a little space right above my half moon and I'm just going to come from the corner here and I want you to think of the Sun and how you used to draw the sun and you can see that I just did one line coming down from the corner and now I'm going to start to move on the diagonal to make rays of the sun just like so now you could do it really simple like this where you've got lots of space in between or if you wanted to you could add more into each one and that creates a little bit of interest I think into the corners so I'll just turn my piece and I'm going to do it all over again so here I am and you can see this one doesn't have as much room and that's okay with me just acknowledging what's there I'm just putting in those original sun beams and then I think I'm going to add a little extra to this one as well. So I'll just go in and add a little extra. I'm making it extra. And I can see that I've got room for one more right there. So there's that. And then I'm just going to turn and do it again. So I'm right here coming into the center, off to the diagonal. And then I'll go in and I will add a few more. So really you decide how much detail you want to put in there. If you want to keep it really simple, keep it simple. There's an elegance to simplicity, you know? And then I'm just turning, doing it again. One more time, adding in those extra pieces And then as my very favorite teacher likes to say, ta-da! <laughs> so now we've got our really pretty uh, flower funnels all created there. So if you need to pause to catch up with us, go ahead and do so and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to go all the way around. So we're gonna start to work with fescue and for those of you who haven't done fescue before. Fescue basically looks like a line with a little teardrop at the end of it that's puddled in and I believe fescue is spelled F-E-S-C-U-E, fescue, and it shows up in a lot of my tangles. I love this and I think it adds a, a layer of um, elegance to the piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn my piece over. And I'm just going to add a fescue into some of these places. So I'm just going to start right here. And you can see that I'm right in the middle there. I'm going to make this nice and big for you. So I'm going to come up the center here. And I'm going to add my little teardrop at the edge. And I'm going to puddle it in. Now notice I went really nice and high here. I'm really close towards the top but not hitting the top. And then I'm gonna to go to the other side and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm right here in the middle and I'm gonna come up and over and I'm gonna make my teardrop and they're both turned in towards that flux that's right in the center. You can see this one's a little bit taller than this one. 
that's okay. I'm okay with that. So I'm gonna go around now to either side of my teardrop or my flux, and I'm gonna add those fescues in, adding a little puddling there, and a little puddling here. See how they're turned in towards one another? Turning, here we go, up and over, right here, up and over, adding in your puddling, and one more time, right here, and right here. Now, if you need to catch up, this is a great place to pause me, and I'll see you in a minute. If you wanna continue on with me, here we go. So I'm gonna start right here. You can see it. this is that center point on the fescue. I'm gonna add a little baby fescue right here, and he's gonna be a little shorter, and I'm squeezing him in. Now, if you don't have room to add these, that's just fine. You can just leave it nice and simple. Otherwise, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add one more, and they're both moving in the same direction for their teardrops, right, at the little top part, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm starting at the center, I'm coming up and over. You can see this one's a little tighter, and that's okay with me. And here's another one. See how nice that makes that? It gives a little bit of energy. I really like that. I'm gonna turn my tile, I'm gonna do it again. I'm starting from the center point, coming up, creating a little teardrop at the top, coming over to the opposite side, and you can see these are not as tall as the first one. I'm doing the same thing right here, coming up and over. One more, up and over and then I'll turn again. Coming up and in here. One more right there. And then I'll come over right here. There's one more. Turning my tile, making it easy for my hand. There we are, one more, final set right here, so it almost looks like a sun in the center, which I really love, it gives it a nice energy, a nice feel to it, so take a minute to catch up with me and I'll see you uh, on the next set. Take a breath, relax, and enjoy what you're doing, practicing katsu katsu. Okay, so now we're gonna start to work with the center of the piece here. So I'm gonna come in right through the center, and I'm gonna make a plus sign. So you'll see that I'm coming down from that top flux to the bottom flux, and I'm connecting them. And then I'll turn my tile to make it easy for my hand, and I'll do it again. There we go. Once you have that, we're gonna start to do some aura work in the center. So I'm just gonna make these pizza slices. I'm just gonna go in and aura through. Get right in there. And you can see that that creates this really beautiful, almost Hopi-like symbol in the center. I'm very fascinated with Native American art. I think that it's just gorgeous. And so whenever anything shows up in my work that has any kind of a tribal feel, I'm always very excited to see that. And this particular uh, image always seems to invoke that for me. So I'm gonna switch out of my Micron and I'm gonna go into my Mono Twin here. And I am going to puddle into those pieces. Now I'm working in a nice circular motion. My pen is barely touching the page here. 
And one of the things that I love about working with black is you can always clean up your lines. So I'm cleaning up that line there and I'll go into the next one over here. One of the things that I love to tell my students about black is that it adds gravity to a piece. It can help take a piece that is very, very busy and calm it down so that you can really see what you're working with. I also say the same thing about color. Often when I've got a very, very busy Zentangle in front of me, I can't wait to get color on it because it has a tendency to calm it down. And then I'll come in and I'll do a little bit more. Just getting right in there. That line's a little bit wonky, so I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit, like so. And you can see I've got a little bit of a wonky line right there. I'm okay with that. It doesn't, it doesn't make very much of a difference to me because once I get color in there, it's not gonna really matter. So I'm gonna let go of my mono twin and I'm gonna come back to my micron. If you need to pause me here, this is a great place to do it so that you can fill in your piece. I'll see you in a minute. Take a few deep breaths while you're doing this next part. So I think about a year ago, I got to go down to the 1440 in the Santa Cruz Mountains and go see Rick and Maria teach down there. And they did a Beyond the Basics class that I really loved. And Maria introduced the idea of the interrupted line. And I will talk about that just for a second. So, you know, often we do, you know, really strong lines. But Maria, uh, she introduced this idea of doing an interrupted line where you kind of had a couple of dots and then a long line and then maybe a couple of little ones. It almost looks like the stuff that we did cursive on when we were kids, right? So what I'm doing for the border on this is a little bit of interrupted line. And so I'm just gonna turn over my piece and I'm gonna blow this up nice and large for you so that you can see. I'm gonna start in this corner right here and I'm gonna you know, have a nice bold line and then I'm gonna interrupt a little bit and then I'll have a nice bold line and interrupt a little bit and then I might do like a little dash or something like that. You don't have to have a specific way that you do it, just kinda don't be perfect about it. I'm just doing another one of those bold lines and some interruptions, another bold with some interruptions, and then bold again. I'm just turning my piece, I'm going bold with it, and then some interruptions bold, interruptions, and then bold again. And then here comes the final corner right here. I'm just gonna go bold, interruptions, bold, interruptions, and some bold. And I think that that just gives a really nice kind of charming feel to the piece itself. It's just letting it be a little bit different. It doesn't have to have a really strong edge. And by the way, when we bring in all the color that we're gonna be using, we're not gonna to need to have a really strong border because the color itself is gonna act as a border. So there you have it. Here is our beautiful Zentangle piece. And I know that some of you are saying, well, hey, you did some uh, tangling in the actual corners here or in the outside border. Yes, but I did that as wallpaper. And so for those of you who have done some of my other videos, you'll know that wallpaper is where you tangle with the color that you're coloring with. And you can also see there's more wallpaper in this one right here. I've got some printemps in here and it is in that nice purple that I was working with. So I just want you to keep in mind that if we are gonna do some more tangling, it'll probably be as wallpaper, okay? So we are gonna let go of our microns, and I want you to start to think about what color you wanna see inside of your flower funnel here, okay? So take a minute, look through your colors, see what's speaking to you, and I'll see you on the next segment. All right, so I've had an opportunity to pick out the colors that I wanna use for my uh, flower funnel here, and I'm gonna start with this really nice, it's like a, 
a purplish pink here. And I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna start by laying down a little bit of color very, very lightly in this area. And I wanna talk about color just for a second. For those of you who have never done my videos before, you have uh, three different colors in one pencil. You have your light, you have your medium, and you have your dark. Okay, so whenever I say that we're starting with the light, the medium, or the dark, we're definitely looking at that. So I'm just coming in and I'm very, very lightly letting that color lay down onto the page here. You can see that I'm working my pencil in a circular like motion. Here, I'll go slow motion for you, <laughs> and then I'll go fast motion for you. <laughs> slow motion fast motion <laughs> all right so I'm just laying down that color in there and you can see that it's nice and light and the reason why I always start with the light I think it's probably the watercolorist in me you can always go darker later but if you start in the darker it's always harder to go lighter so what I've done is I've laid down that nice light color here and make that nice and large for you and then I'm gonna come in with that same color now and I'm gonna do a nice medium tension so you can see that it's starting to uh, show that it's a little bit darker because I'm pressing a little bit harder on the pencil and then what I'm gonna do is as I get closer to the top I'm only going about three quarters of the way up with that medium tension but what I am doing is I'm lightening up on my tension so that I don't get a line of demarcation a line of demarcation is where you can see the end of one color and the next color coming in and I always wanted to have a really nice transition between the two so now I'm coming back in and I'm gonna press a little bit harder and I'm gonna go about three quarters of the way up the medium color. And then watch, I'm gonna to start to lighten up on the edge of my pencil. And now you can see there's no line of demarcation there. It's a nice blend of color coming from the bottom to the top. And then if you're feeling like you really wanna see a very nice strong accent of color, I've got this nice dark purple here and I'm just gonna use a little bit of it and I'm barely letting that purple touch the page here. And I'm just letting that blush of the dark purple come in. And then I'll just stop and just let it be. And you can see just how that little hint of that dark purple really added a nice gravity to the piece. So I'll come in on the other side here and I'll do the same thing. So I'm just gonna go in with that medium tension. And then I'm gonna start to let it fade out as I get closer to the edge of the piece. And then I'll go ahead again and I will use that heavier tension now. Nice depth. And then I'll come back in with that really nice purple and just let it get nice and rich right at the bottom. Super juicy. And then I'll start to lighten up as I come out so I don't get a line of demarcation, okay? So we're gonna go around to the other funnel flowers that we have here. I'm just gonna zoom out. I've got this one, this one, and this one to go. So let's take our time and enjoy what we're doing here. Enjoy the color, you don't have to rush. Put me on pause and I'm gonna go around and do mine while you do yours. See you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around with it, and it's really starting to develop a very nice feeling, I think, with that purple. And so now we're gonna start to think about the colors that we wanna see inside of our half moons that are at the top of each of those. So I think for mine, what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna stay with the concept of rays of the sun here and I'm going to be using a really nice orange and a really nice red together. So what it's going to look like is I've got my orange color here. I'm going to blow this up, make it nice. 
nice and big. I'm gonna come in here with that nice orange color and I'm really just using light tension and just filling that in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with a little bit of heavier tension and really start to get a nice depth with that orange. And I'm gonna to start to fade it out a little bit so I don't get that line of demarcation there. You can see that it's got a nice light there on the edge. I kind of like that. I think that it makes it have a little bit of dimension. And now I'm gonna come in with this red and I'm going to start to bring some of that red right into the tip there. And this is just gonna give it a little bit of that depth that I'm looking for. Now, one of the things that I talk about a lot is when you have a color that doesn't have a lot of depth, you sometimes need to bring in something that does have a little bit more depth. And orange has such a light viscosity to the color itself that having that red there gives this a little bit more of the heaviness that I'm looking for, that really nice, bright, vibrant color. And then I'll just come in with that orange and just blend it in a little bit just to make it a little bit softer in its presentation. So I'm gonna go around now to all of my little half moons. I'll go here, here, and here, and uh, fill those in. So you go ahead and do yours, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around, and now we're gonna to start to think about our flux here, and we're gonna really focus on the tip of the flux here, the, the outside edge here. And so what I want to do is I want to think about a color that would contrast from the purples and the, um, and the orange that I've been putting in here. And uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably go with a really pretty blue on those. So what I've done is I've grabbed a really nice navy blue and then I've grabbed a really nice light turquoise color as well. So I have these two colors here. I've got a nice turquoise and a nice navy blue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in right here on the edge here. And I'm going to start to lay down that color. But notice that I'm leaving the very edge of this light right there. So right there, I'm not putting any color. Now I'm gonna come in with that medium tension on the turquoise, but once again, this doesn't have a lot of viscosity to it, which is the body of the color, so I'm going to need to have that complementary color to give it the depth that I'm looking for. So even though I'm doing this nice medium tension, it's still not gonna give me the depth that I need to really make it pop. So of course I'm gonna mix my colors and try to make them nice and soft. So I'm really fading out there trying to get a nice blend. I'll blow that up so that you can see it. So I'll get a nice depth right around here. And then I'll come in with that navy color. And I will start to give it that depth. You can see that that really just kind of sparked right off of that turquoise blue. It almost glows. Now there is a little bit of line of demarcation there, so I'm just gonna lightly fade into that medium color so that I don't get such a strong line of demarcation there. And see how that really just kind of faded that in really nicely. I'm just getting nice and close to that edge there, making that nice and dark. And it really starts to make that whole area start to glow nice and blue. So I'm gonna go around to each of the, the outside edges of the flux and turn those blue. I'll see you in a minute. So I've had a chance to go all the way around and it's really starting to pop, it's starting to 
get some movement there. So we're gonna to start to focus on the next part, which is the inside of the flux right here. And you can see in my hand, I've got that cool gray pencil that I was talking about here. And I really do love this pencil. It's one of my favorites. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start right here in the bottom of flux. And I'm very, very lightly laying down some shading. Not putting in too, too much, just a little bit to make it interesting. And you can see that my hand is working in that circular-like motion, really getting a nice, soft, smoky feeling. My pencil is just barely touching the page here. Now I'm gonna come in with a little bit more tension and make a little bit of depth in towards the bottom of flux here. And I'm gonna go about three quarters of the way up. Now notice I left light at the top here. I did not color all the way up to the top of the triangle. I left a little bit of light there. And I'm just gonna come up now about three quarters of the way. And then I'll add a little bit of darkness right here at the bottom. Just a little bit of depth. And you can see how interesting that makes that. I just, I love using the gray with color. I just think that the juxtaposition of it is just so beautiful. It adds a really nice depth. So I'm just gonna start to work in all of these and use the same technique that I just used here. Okay, so go all the way around, use the colors that you wanna use. You don't have to use gray if you don't want to. If you don't have it, you could use any other color that you want. I just happen to be really smitten with the idea of the gray and have done it on all of the ones that I've done. So just so you can see, there's gray in this one. There's gray in this one. And then there's gray in this one, okay? so. Just to play or to learn, you might pull out the gray or pull out a graphite pencil and do it with graphite um, or see if you have a gray in your pencil set. I'll see you in a minute. All right, so here we go. I've got this really nice green that I'm gonna start to use after I've finished up all of these edges here and worked in the gray. <coughs> So I've had a chance to finish up the gray, and now I'm gonna switch into another contrast color that I think will be nice. So I've got this really nice kind of olivey green, and then I've also got a forest green that I'm gonna be using with it. And we're gonna to start to focus on all of this area right in here. Can you see all the negative areas where fescue is? So I'm right in those areas, and I'm just gonna start by very lightly laying down a little bit of that olive green. Now notice how far back I am on my pencil here. I'm not up here for detail work. I'm back here because I'm gonna be doing a lot of color. So I'm really just bringing in some of that olive green into the piece here. And I'm going right over the fescue. Can you see that? I just went right over it. It's no big deal because it's a dark color. If it was a light color, it might fade out my fescue, but because it's a darker color, it's okay with me that I'm laying down that color there. If you're using an orange or a yellow, you might wanna um, ease up a little bit around the fescue because it will leave a mask of color on top of your ink. Now you can always go back in later and overlay your ink on top of it, but it might make your pen a little bit cranky going over the waxiness of the pencils. So I always say to people, if you're using a light color, just you know lift up your pen or your pencil and, um, and not hit that. Uh, that area too hard okay so you can see that I've been just going through the area with that nice green and I'm letting it fill up the area I'm doing it nice and lightly I'm not using heavy tension so now that I have that let me just blow this up so that you can really see it now I'll go in with that medium tension and I'm gonna come in and you can see that I've moved myself a little further down on the pencil here and I'm doing nice circular motion. You'll start to see that there's a depth that's happening in that color 
and I'm coming up right to the edge of those little fescues. And then what I'll start to do is I'll start to fade out. So what I mean by that is I'm lightly starting to lift my pencil up so that the tension isn't so hard to give that a nice fade. So you can see the difference between this side and this side. There's all that green in there, but what happens when you put in that medium tension is really, really nice. Now, because this olive green can go a little bit darker, it's not going to show that much. It just doesn't have the body that I need for it to give me the depth that I'm looking for. So I'm going to go and I'm going to grab now that forest green and I'm going to bring it in. And you can see that when I start to bring that forest green in, I get that really nice depth right in at the bottom. And I'm circling my pencil a little bit, letting that come in. And you can see that really nice depth that we got from that. So you get this really nice light olive green to a medium green to a really nice dark green. I'm gonna go all the way around the piece and do just that, all of where my fescues are. So you go ahead and you do your fescues and I'll do mine and we'll meet up in a couple of minutes. Take your time and enjoy. Really let yourself love working with the color. The color is just really luscious and it's fun to work with. So really just play with it. So I've had a chance to go around and add my shading to the piece itself, which is really nice. It's really got that glow factor now that I've been looking for. A lot of energy coming from the center of the piece and moving its way out, really giving a, a nice pull into the piece itself. So I'm going to blow this up here for a minute. We're going to talk about wallpaper. For those of you who've never done wallpaper with me before, um, my friend Stephanie, who is one of my students, she coined the phrase because it's like tangling, but it's not overtaking the piece. And so what you're doing is you're using a color that you have used in the background itself and you're using it for a tangle. So I'm just going to start by coming in here and I'm going to do printemps and I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to start to lay down some of printemps in there and you can see that I'm really taking my time with it. I'm not going fast. You know, people have a tendency with printemps to go like this. And they all end up the same and it looks like you didn't take the time or care. Now, if, if you wanted to be kind of messy about it, that's fine, but I think that there's a certain elegance to Pronton. If you go nice and slow, you'll end up with really pretty deliberate lines. And um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm just very carefully adding in some wallpaper there and I'm taking my time. Remember Katsu Katsu? So really, this is where Katsu Katsu starts to come into play. And you want to make sure that your pencil is nice and sharp that you're working with. And um, you'll notice that I'm not going in here. This would be very difficult to, uh, to add uh, some apprentant to. I don't think it would show up very well, and it might be a little bit um, uh, distracting to the eye. So I'm just doing it in the light places here. So you can see that I'll come in right here and I will put in some of that printemps. And here it is over here. So I'm just gonna go around and add it into the piece. And you go ahead and add it into. I'll see you in a minute. Now, if you decide that this is something that you don't wanna do with this piece, I totally understand. Just hang out for a minute and I'll see you in the next segment. Don't forget to breathe. Okay, so I've had a chance to go all the way around and finish up that wallpaper. What I'm gonna start to do now is I'm going to pull from the teardrops here and here and here, and I'm gonna add those around my suns. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab those initial colors that I started with, that turquoise and the, um, and the really nice dark blue. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm very, very lightly adding some of that blue into here. 
One of the things that I talk about a lot in my videos is carrying my colors around a piece. And what that means is, is I'm looking for ways to use colors that are already present in other places that will help the eye to bounce around a little bit. So I've just gone in and I've added that nice light blue in there. And then I'm gonna come in with that medium tension and you'll see that I'm working in that circular-like motion again. Adding a little bit of that medium tension. And then I'll start to fade it off so that I don't get too much of a line of demarcation there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with that dark blue and I'm just gonna let it go right around that crescent moon, giving it a really nice glow. It's almost like it's a little flame or something. It's pretty nice. So I love how that's just gonna move your eye from here to there, back over here. So your eye is just moving around. So I'm just moving through and I'll be adding that into all four of my corners. You go ahead and do the same thing or you can choose a completely different color if you like. You might even wanna try the gray if you like that. So see what really appeals to you and then go with that. I'm merely making suggestions. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so here we are. We're really coming along, aren't we? I'm enjoying the way that this is going. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna once again carry a color, and the color that I'm looking at is right here. You can see that I've got these nice orange pieces, and I'm going to carry that out into my border. And one of the things that I was doing in the borders here was trying to create almost a Zen button feeling with the square, where I left the light in the center and um, really created this kind of roundedness effect with the shading to really make it feel like it was three-dimensional. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that orange that I was working with and I'm also gonna grab that red. And I'm gonna start and you'll see that I'm pretty far back on my pencil because I'm really just gonna start to lay down color here. And I'm gonna blow this up so that you can really see what I'm up to here. So I'm going to start with a very rounded feeling as I start to shade in. I really want to get that smoky, smoky quality going on in this piece. So you can see that I'm just starting to lay that down and I'm going to move it all the way around. The border and I'm very very lightly doing this I'm not going heavy handed I'm really just being light and moving my hand around on the piece and I'm just going to do this corner as a demonstration and you'll be able to do the rest of it on your own here so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the top here and I'm once again going to start to lay down that color now notice that I'm leaving that center white Right, and so I'm just working around this corner here. You can see that as I turn the corner, I'm leaving that center area white, coming around, and just really getting a nice light color. Now you'll notice that I'm not being very particular about how clean that white is. Um, I want it to have a little bit of variation in there. If it's too perfect, it's gonna look a little awkward. Anytime you see sheen or shine on something, it isn't a perfect line, and we don't wanna have ours have a perfect line either. So I'm just gonna go in and make it a little imperfect just by doing little zigs and zags here and there. So you can see that I've developed that sheen on the one side, and now I'm gonna to start to go in with that darker tension. Now remember, because that orange doesn't have a lot of pigmentation, it's not gonna give me the depth that I'm looking for straight away, so I will have to add some red to it. But I'm gonna go in now, and I'm gonna to start to add some of that heavier color in there. Now notice that I'm not over, um, I'm not going all the way up through the light, I'm leaving some of that light in there. You see how there's that light color and then I'm coming in and just starting to add in some of that uh, medium color. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for variation in our color. So we don't wanna lose that lightness. We wanna keep it. 
and then I'll turn and start to create that variation on this side as well. You can see that I'm keeping that light, but I'm also adding the medium to it. You can see that I'm also adding variation and fluctuation into it. We don't want it to be a perfect line going all the way through. We want it to have some movement and some variation. And then what I'll do is I'll come onto the outside area here and start to do the exact same thing, right? So I'm leaving some of the light and some of the dark. Really getting in there around the outside edge here making it easy for your hand to move and work around the piece. Turning, turning, turning. You can see that that really gives it quite a nice glow, doesn't it? Really nice feeling there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab that red and I'm gonna to start to bring in some of that red into the inside area, really to make it have that glow factor. So you can see that I'm really sticking close to the inside line here, I'm not going too far out, maybe just a little bit here and there just to give it a little bit of that intensity. And you can see just by adding some of that red how much that's starting to glow. And I'll come up here and do the same thing all along in here. And every once in a while I'm gonna variate and give it a little bit of um, inconsistency because I, I wanna see some of that, um, that messiness to it where it'll have a little bit of depth to it. And then what I'll do is I'll come to the outer edge and I'll do the same thing on the outer edge. can see that I'm really running right along that edge there just to give it a little bit of depth. Now one thing that I really like to do is I like to go back in with that lighter orange and start to blend a little bit. So I like to dip into that color a little bit and see if I can start to blend it. And you can see that my pencil is moving in that circular like motion and I'm just trying to soften up that line of demarcation there. So as I zoom out you can really see the side that has all of the colors really starting to pop, and this side is a little bit more quiet. So you have to kind of decide, am I feeling a little bit more quiet? Do I want this to be a quieter piece? Or do I want it to have a little bit of electricity? Are you here to learn a little bit and do something that's outside of your comfort zone? Or are you wanting to go outside of your comfort zone and stay a little quiet? Because you know, for me, it, this might be more of a challenge just because it's quieter, right? So you might have to, you know, ask yourself that question. What do I want to say here? What, what am I really feeling? And so you decide what works best for you, okay? I'm merely opening the door, but you are the one who will walk through it. So I'm gonna go all the way around the piece and finish it up, and I hope you'll use that technique too. So we're going light, medium, add your contrasting dark just to get it really poppy, or do you wanna keep it a little bit more quiet? You may decide that this might be a great place to use that graphite or the gray if you're looking for something a little bit more quiet. So ask yourself those questions and then go ahead and go for it. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see I've had a chance to go all the way around on the outside and really bring that orange to life. And boy, is it really glowing. I really love it. It's got a really nice electricity to it. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab onto that orange again and I'm going to add another tangle into it and unfortunately the name of this tangle is escaping me. Um, if I can find it before the end of the video I will put it up on here but here we go. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to start in this corner right here and I'm going to start to make a triangle and I'm going to come back down. I'm going to make three triangles going across. So you'll see that I'm just going up and down, up, and down, and I'm trying to land into that corner. Can everybody see that? I'm hoping that you can. So there's my three triangles, and I'm gonna go all the way around with this. So I'm gonna start it again. I'm gonna go up, and down, up, and down. And you can see that I'm working in that orange. So this is technically wallpaper that we're doing here. And then I'm gonna go up, down, up, then down, up, down. I'm doing my best to make all of the triangles the same shape or the same size anyhow. And some of them might be bigger than others. I imagine that these ones on the corners are a little bit more. Now even if I just left it like this, that would be a really fun little border right there. And I, and I like it very much, but I'm gonna add a little bit more to it because it's just my nature here. And so I'm going to use now the inside line right here. Can everybody see this line? I'll blow that up nice and big for you. So this is gonna be my guiding line, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna aura that line. And in the Zentangle world, if you're new to Zentangle and you're here, um, aura means I'm just uh, copying that line over and over again. So I'm gonna come to this next one. I'm skipping this upside down triangle. Can everybody see that? I'm coming to the next one and I'm gonna do the same exact thing right in here. Just like so, I'm gonna go to the next one. I'm skipping this upside down triangle and I'm going right here. So that's all that I'm gonna do in that area right there. Now, I'm going to do the upside down triangles. Can everybody see those upside down triangles, the two right here? So this is gonna be my guiding line. Can you see that line right there? That's my guiding line. So I'm gonna just go in like so and add that in. And you can see how nice it is that when we did that shading before, now I don't have to do the shading because it's already been done. Now I'm gonna leave my corners alone because I kind of like the emptiness in the corners. So I'm gonna do it again now. I'm gonna go to this spot right here and you can do this one with me. So hopefully you've had a chance to do your triangles. If you haven't had a chance to do your triangles, maybe you pause me here and then catch up with me, okay? All right, so here I go. I'm gonna use this line as my aura line right here. And I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. See how that went? Going, I'm gonna skip the upside down triangle, and then I'm gonna go all the way around. Just like so. Oops, that one got off a little wobbly there. It's okay. And then I'm going to now come back in and do these two triangles right here. This is my guideline right there, right? So a good rule of thumb is to always think about the line is perpendicular to this one when you're going in the opposite direction. So this line is perpendicular to this line, okay? So now I've got this corner free, and I've got this corner free. I'm gonna flip my tile there, and I'm gonna do it all again. Here I go. This is my guiding line right here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'll do it again. And one more time with spirit. <laughs> 
and then I'll come back in and I'll do my upside down triangle. So I'm going in the opposite direction, that perpendicular direction here. And you wanna make sure that your pencil is nice and sharp when you're doing this. And you can see that I'm not pushing down overly hard. The color just comes right onto the page, no problem, okay? So last one right here, last set. Going right across, no big whoop. Oops, I'm gonna make sure that my hand is not in the way that you can see everything that I'm up to. And then I'm gonna go to the other side. Here we are. So now when I zoom out, you can really see what I've been up to. Isn't that lovely? How we have that nice border there. It just gives it such a nice, interesting feeling, I think. So we're gonna take a few minutes to let you finish up, and then we're gonna go ahead and finish our last part, which is in the middle, to really make it pop, okay? I'll see you in a minute. Take your time, katsu katsu, and breathe and relax. Enjoy what you're doing. All right, so you know how I like to carry my colors. So orange has been kind of the name of the, the game here with carrying the colors around. I carried the blue around for a little bit, and now I'm going to carry the orange into the center here. And I think that that's just gonna give it a really nice kind of unfolding, if you will. So I'm gonna come in here, and I'm just gonna lay down the orange nice and light. So you can see that I'm not gonna go to my edges. I'm just gonna leave the edges a little bit white. Can you see that? Hopefully you can. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the center and I'm gonna add a little bit more of that depth, but I'm not gonna go over the um, orange all the way. I'm giving that a little bit of that medium tension that we were talking about. And then finally, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with that red, and I'm just gonna add that red to the center to make it have a nice glow. So there is that part of getting the nice glow to it. And I'm just gonna go over those little areas there where I feel like I need to kind of clean it up a little bit. Maybe add a little bit darker in the orange section. Maybe add a touch more of the red just to give it a little bit of a pop. Okay, so that's the center. Take your time and finish that up and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we are gonna do some last minute work here. And part of that is that we are gonna go into our funnel flower and add some thicker lines to it. And you can see that I'm working with my mono twin pen and I've got my fine liner side on and I'm just gonna come up here and add to here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in and fill this in right here. Notice how I'm underneath that original line and then I'm just gonna go in and fill it in with that nice black line. I'm gonna come over to the opposite side and do the same thing once again. Really developing that nice dark color then I'll go around to the next one and do the same. So I'm just coming down from this corner and diving in and then filling it in with that nice darkness. And I'll do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm just moving in, adding some of that nice darkness all the way around here. Just filling that in. 
and you can see that that's really going to change the piece quite a lot. It's going to give it the depth that we're looking for. I'm just going to clean up that line there a little bit. And we'll go around to the next one and do the same. Now this is something that you could also do with your micron if you wanted to do that with your micron as well. Although I really do feel like the mono twin is just gonna go over the, the color pencil a little bit better. So you can see now the electricity that that just gave it just by going over with a little bit of that black marker, yeah? So go ahead and clean up your lines and, and see what else needs to be done. And I'm feeling pretty good about this. So the last part is to go ahead and add your initials to the piece. And you can see that I've hidden in my initial right here at the bottom. I like to hide my initial somewhere in the piece. And that way it just is a form of completion of the piece itself. So uh, go ahead and do that. And our time has come to a close here and I've so enjoyed uh, creating this piece with you. I hope that you have too. Um, if you enjoyed the video today, please leave a thumbs up or a nice review uh, after the video. I'm trying to increase my online presence and that would help me ever so much. And there are other videos that you can uh, take at Tangled Yogi 333 uh, if you want to try something different. So please check it out. And um, also, if you are interested in tiles, you can always go to tangledyogi.com and check out the Tangled Yogi store. They are available there. We have these and the rustics, and we are going to have some newer tiles coming out in the next few months. So uh, check those out. I really enjoyed our time together and I look forward to tangling with you again. So until we tangle again, this is Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi, signing off.